Hello my dear friends, welcome to my channel that is learning and programming with Chetan. Friends, in this particular video, we will going to discuss about dependency injection in Spring. So let us first discuss about what is dependency injection. So dependency injection is a design pattern that is used to remove the dependencies from our application code. Which means that in dependency injection, we are not creating an object by our own, but we are injecting the dependencies from some external source by the help of configuration files or annotations. Now let us discuss about various advantages of dependency injection. So by using the concept of dependency injection, we can make our application loosely coupled. Also by using this concept, we can easily manage our applications and we can easily test our application because now the objects are not dependent to each other and we can easily test our classes individually now let us try to understand this concept of dependency injection by the help of example so for understanding the concept of dependency injection i have created one project with the name dependency injection concept and inside our project i have created one bean class with the name subject and the subject class contain one field with the name subject name and this is the default constructor and parameterized constructor of our subject class with getter setter methods. And I have also overrided a two string method for our subject class. And here I have created one more class with the name student tightly coupled. And inside our class, I am having three properties with the name role number, student name. And here I am having one more property with the name subject. And here you can see that it is of type subject. Now here you can see that inside our default constructor and parameterized constructor, we are creating an object of our subject class by using new keyword. So friends, here you can see that our student class is dependent on subject class. And when we have to make any changes for our subject class object, then we have to make the changes inside our Java class. So our student class and subject class are tightly coupled with each other. Now let us try to understand the concept of dependency injection and we will see that how we can make our application loosely coupled. So here I am having one more class with the name student and it contains three properties with the name role number, student name and subject and subject is of type subject class. And here I have created a default constructor and parameterized constructor. Now friends, here you can see that in place of creating an object of our subject class by using new keyword, we are assigning the value to our subject class reference variable by injecting the dependency from some external source. So here you have noticed that our student class object and subject class object are loosely coupled. Now let us see the configuration file which we have created to inject the dependency to our student class. So here I have created an XML file with the name application context and inside our application context we are using an bean tag to provide the definition for our beans. So here I am using a bean tag and inside our bean tag we are having an id attribute to provide the id for our bean and this is our class attribute in which we are providing the fully qualified name of our subject bean. And inside our bean tag, we are using a property tag to provide the values for our property. So inside our subject class, we are having a property with the name subject name and we are providing its value as English. And here I am having one more bean tag and this is for our student class with an id student bean. And here I am using a property tag to provide the values for our various fields. So I have provided the value tan for our roll number field. Then for our student name, I have provided the value as Chetan. And here you can see that for subject reference variable, we are using a reference tag to provide its value. So this is the ID which we have provided for our subject bean. So friends, this is how we can create our configuration file. Friends, I have created one more class to test our application and the name of our class is test bean factory. And inside our class, I have created one main method. And I have told you that we are using an external source to inject the dependency. So that external source is known as IOC container. Now let us first concentrate on this particular statement. So here this resource is an interface and this is the reference variable of our resource interface and it is holding an object of class path resource. So this class path resource is an implementation class of our resource interface and inside our class path resource we are providing the name of our configuration file that is application context.xml. So friends, this resource object is used to represent the information which we have provided inside our configuration file that is application context. And in our next statement, we are creating an object of our IOC container. So this bean factory is an IOC container and it is an interface. And this XML bean factory is the implementation class for bean factory. 
and inside our XML bean factory, we are passing an object of resource. So friends, this IOC container is responsible to inject the dependencies in our Spring application. And in our next statement, we are using an get bean method of our bean factory. And here you can see that we are passing an ID of our student bean, which we have defined inside our configuration file. And here we are calling a method of our student class that is student details. And inside this method, we are printing the value of our student object. Now let us run our program. So friends, in our console, you can see that we are getting the values of the different fields which we have defined inside our student class. That is roll number equals to 10. And this is the value which we have defined inside our application context. That is the value of roll number is 10. And a student name is coming as Chetan, which we have provided inside our configuration file. And here our subject name is coming as English. And this is the same value which we have defined inside our configuration file. So friends, here you can see that we are not creating an object of our subject class or a student class directly. But we are using an external source that is IOC container which is using an configuration file that is application context.xml to inject the dependencies into our application. So I believe that you are able to understand that how easily we can inject the dependencies from some external source into our application. And friends, there are two type of dependency injections in Spring that is setter injection and constructor injection. And the example which we have recently discussed, there we have used a setter injection. In our upcoming tutorials, we will discuss about different types of dependency injection in detail. And if you are having any doubts related to this particular tutorial, then you can write your queries in comment section.